Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Maureen O'Connor from Quilters Heaven in Northbrook, Illinois, and I am the Opinionated Quilter. Today's episode, number 46, is a fat quarter-friendly version of the very first quilt from the Scrap Fabric Challenge. But before we get to that, let's get to my opinion. I hear over and over again in the YouTube videos that I watch, don't sew over pins. Pull out your pin before your needle gets to it. Don't sew over pins. In my opinion, you can sew over pins without damaging your machine, knocking it out of timing, and breaking needles. How do you do that? You use the correct pin. These magic pins here are. 0.4 millimeters. They are tiny. When you look at that, this magic pin here, you can hardly see it on this background. The much fatter pin, you can see clear as day. This is much bigger diameter than this. So when you go to buy pins, if you want to sew over them, make sure they are extra fine. I look at this pin, which I like the flower head pins. If you're doing like, for instance, a um, stack and whack where you wanna put a ruler over top of it. But if you look and read this one, the width is 0.7 millimeters. So it is much fatter than the 0.4 from the magic pins. And yes, they bend over time, they wear out, they're expensive and you have to replace them. But if you want to sew over pins, this is your go-to. Let me show you. I've got a border made and pinned to the quilt and I'm going to sew with the magic pins and you will see that the machine has no problem going over them and I don't have any breakage of the needle. I usually don't have you all watch me sew because I say to myself, you don't need to see me sew, you know how to sew. But in this case, I'm demonstrating that the machine doesn't have any trouble going over these needles, or these pins, excuse me. All I'm doing is watching my quarter inch mark on the throat plate. I haven't heard it even hit the pin. And if it does, the pin is so skinny that it just bounces right off. done cut my thread and then I'll take the pins out I'd like to give you an update as to where I am on the cutting for the last quilt in the scrap fabric challenge and I'd really love to see what you all are making with the different patterns so if you could post what you've made on Instagram using the hashtag T-O-Q Scrap Fabric Challenge, we can see what you have made. So here is what I have so far. I have four bags. I've told you what you need for each block. I have, uh, if I can remember correctly, I think I'm at about 349 blocks. So if you look at what you might need for what size quilt you would make, 285 blocks would make a 60 by 76 quilt. I don't really like to make quilts bigger than that. Why? 
because you have to bind them. And I don't like binding bigger than that. The, the bigger the quilt gets, the more difficult it is to bind. So I find this kind of range of a quilt to be the top size I like to make. Now you can take 180 blocks and make a 48 by 60, which is also a good size. And if it's not big enough for you, you can add borders if you like. You wanna make something smaller, 108 blocks will make a 36 by 48. So I'm well over 300, but I said I don't like to make it any bigger than this. Why am I continuing to cut? I'm continuing to cut because I don't want to put any smaller pieces back into my scrap pile. Everything that I cut for this first quilt here is already cut up into these bags, what was left over from the other two quilts in between. They're all in here already. But I don't want to put little things like this back into my scrap heap. I want these all cut up and in the bags. This piece, on the other hand, is a full salvage to salvage piece. This is big enough for me to fold up and still keep in the scrap pile. So whatever I have left, I'm going to use the first 285 for this size. And then whatever I have left, I'll look and see what I have left to do. Maybe I only get another 108. Maybe I get more than that. I'm just going to try to use up as much as I can. And what's left will be the Amish bread starter that goes into the box to do the next time. I do the blue, black, and white um, steam color quilt. So that's where I am on this. Let's get to our fat quarter friendly version. Can you believe these two quilts are the same pattern? You recognize the first quilt from the Scrap Fabric Challenge. When I got this donation of a fat quarter bundle from a customer that was downsizing, I decided perfect quilt to make the same one again. You can har I hardly believe they're the same pattern. So we started with the Amy Butler Fat Quarter Bundle. So then I looked at them and there wasn't enough uh, places where your eyes can rest. If we had only had these big prints and nothing else in there, it would have been too much. So then we added these following fabrics. So then I found that I didn't actually even add enough different fabrics. So we added a few more and then we cut them to the same four and a half inches that we did in the original pattern. And for that, I found I'd like to use the stripology ruler. In the fat quarter bundle, there were 15, but there was a duplicate, and I decided I didn't want to use the duplicate. So I've got that here to show you. So I found that I wanted to put the fat quarter, the half width of fabric this way, the 21, 22 this way, and the 18 this way. And you may say, why would I do that when I could get the longer strips? Four and a half times four is 18. If it's 18 inches, it should be fine. I always like to, to pre treat my fabric either with starch or Mary Ellen's best press. And if you lose even an eighth, a quarter of an inch, you lose a whole four and a half inch strip. So I would rather to do the long this way, the 21, 22 this way, and the 18 this way. And the stripology ruler works great for this because super easy to get your rotary cutter in here, cut at the zero, and then you're going to cut four and a half, nine, 13 and a half, and 18. And what's left over here to the right went into a bag to be cut up into another scrap quilt. So once we have our pieces, we need to sub cut them. So we're going to move over to the whiteboard and show you the numbers that I did there. 
So as I said, we have our long way this way and 18 inches this way, and we've cut four strips with a stripology ruler. Of course, you can use any ruler you like. That one just works out great for this project. So out of the first strip, I cut a 10 and a half piece and a six and a half piece. Out of the second, I did eight and a half, four and a half, and four and a half. And the third, I did an eight and a half and a six and a half. And on the fourth, I did a six and a half, four and a half, and four and a half. Now, this is just a suggestion. This is what I thought worked best for me. If you have a different number you want to do, absolutely. It's your quilt. Go for it. I ended up with one 10 and a half inch piece per each fat quarter, two eight and a half, three six and a half, and four four and a half. Now, if we had only used the fat quarters from the fat quarter, excuse me, if we'd only used the pieces from the fat quarter bundle, we would have had enough to do this whole quilt. So I still have a whole bunch of pieces in my scrap bag, and I'm just going to start sewing them together to make a Project Linus quilt. I should, I should say another Project Linus quilt. But I, again, as I said on the scrap version, I just laid them out on the table till I got to 72 inches and sewed the columns together. And then Linda, who works at the shop, picked this beautiful cinnamon color for in between. And that's not a color that I would typically pick. So it's a, take that as a little reminder that sometimes have a friend or somebody else pick something to go in your quilt because you might come up with something that you would not have picked and it might surprise you. I just think this turned out fabulous. So now I have to ask one of um, my customers who quilts a lot of quilts for Project Linus if he'll quilt this one for me. I can't imagine how delighted some sick child or some child who needs comfort gets this beautiful, beautiful quilt. So I, I was pretty pleased with it. I hope you have some fat quarter bundles sitting around that you say, I want to do something with it. I think this is a great idea, and I hope you give it a try. So until next time, happy sewing.